Hi, welcome back. Uh, I've got Tom with me from Winning Performance and we're going to cover a blog he wrote back last August in August 2019 on protein and healthy fats for breakfast. Now Tom this is going to be I feel quite controversial because really what you're doing is challenging what generations of Britons have done for years eating Cocoa Pops, Ready Breaks and porridge for breakfast and you're going to tell us that this isn't the thing we should be doing. So in a nutshell can you can you talk about what we should be doing? Well the first quote I should probably look at is uh, one that again my late mentor Charles gave me when well, I first heard it from him is what's what's common isn't always normal so just because we've been doing it for generations doesn't mean we should continue it and this is apt whether it's we're looking at strength and conditioning or nutrition there are a variety of things that people do before the research comes out and just because you've been doing it for 20 years and you've been training doesn't mean it's the best way to train um so so we should definitely lead lead with that um but protein and healthy fats it is what it is so predominantly uh, breakfasts are carbohydrate loaded uh, if you look at uh, traditional cereals for mm -hmm. instance I mean what, what did you grow up on oh it was Weetabix and no. shreddies and no. porridge all sorts so of traditional those. cereals and th th there's mm. there's a time and a place and I think for maybe youths uh, they could definitely benefit from more carbohydrates but simple sugars isn't necessarily the the way to go for absolutely everybody um, how do I base this? Most of the time I base this off body fat levels and activity levels. Uh, you could even take it a step further and you could look at insulin sensitivity levels, but that kind of is, is the same thing as looking at body fat levels. Mm -hmm. uh, the leaner you are, majority of the time, the more insulin sensitive you are, the more you can actually utilize those carbohydrates. Um, when I consult clients with this, uh, we talk about what they eat, but also how they feel first thing in the morning. So if you eat something and it makes you feel drowsy sleepy sluggish then is that the optimal food at that time especially first thing in the morning mm -hmm. and it's it's the effect of food and people again what happens is people get they get used to doing the same thing over and over and all of a sudden their body's adapted and feeling sluggish or feeling like this is now normal okay? so until you try something different you don't know what normal actually is. For me, normal is being awake, alert, energetic, mm -hmm. uh, and ready to go. Other people don't don't have that feeling, and, and all of a sudden, because they feel it every day, that's that's normal to them. And I suppose if you look at the way that those carbohydrate cereals and things are marketed, it's very much about loading up, making you feel warm inside, yeah. making you feel full and perhaps uh, releasing that energy slowly over the course of the, the morning or the day. And it, it's, that, it's that, when I see that whole, oh, it releases energy slowly, most of those cereals don't. If you look at uh, the, the, the insulin response or the blood sugar response to them, they're, they're not slow at all, they're rapid. Mm -hmm. um, so they're backwards that way. But yeah, the marketing, you look at Special K, you've got a sleek logo, mm -hmm. and then you've got a very sleek, slim lady in a red bathing suit. I don't watch a lot of TV. I, I assume that's the advert still. The last time I watched, I saw serial adverts, it was um, what, Bobby Charlton trying to push shredded wheat. Because <laughs> yes. obviously Bobby Charlton's a footballer, everyone would aspire to be like, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, the marketing can can kind of get get at you. I've seen, I've seen marketing with Nutella saying it's slow release, mm -hmm. slow release energy. And <laughs> if you know anything about the, the scientific aspect of food, it's not, slow release energy whatsoever but then again what you put it with could could change it but i mean if it, it, it shouldn't take a rocket scientist to, to tell you that nutella isn't uh, an optimal option mm -hmm. for the majority of people majority of the time that's okay. cashier breakfast so i'm a new client coming in what what would you recommend that i i should have eaten for breakfast this morning i don't recommend anything first i want to know what you're doing first mm -hmm. so the first question is what do you currently eat and i'll get a range from and i only ask for breakfast the first consult i'm not looking at any further the reason being is if we fix breakfast most of the day is normally quite easy breakfast tends to be the biggest jump so if i go and i i go you, you're used to eating shreddies you said mm -hmm. as a kid and i go look i want you to change i want you to have uh eggs and avocado it's a massive leap for you um, but I don't, I don't change too much, uh, too much else because 
going from shreddies to avocado and egg is, is quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. Normally, lunch and dinner do consist of meat or protein, fat, and then usually fibrous carbohydrates. So though, those meals tend to be quite easy to change. I will spend a decent amount of time getting breakfast to and again, inverted commas, optimal, because optimal is going to be different for a variety of people based mm -hmm. on, again, body fat, muscle mass, activity levels. So how do I start? Ask them what they eat. And then it's kind of figuring out whether this client can take on a big change or a small change. I'm a belief of, I, I'm a big believer of small steps, but I get, so you are what I would term a robot. Okay. If I give you something, you're doing it. Okay, you're, you're a high level athlete. It doesn't take much for you to understand that food is fuel and that's how you think about it. You're not gonna be like craving things. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, how can I run another world record? And that's what you wake up thinking. So for you, you're robotic, you can change that. For other people, they're not robotic. It needs to be very small changes. So we get a variety of people who don't eat mm -hmm. breakfast. So they, 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 their last meal of the day is seven, eight, nine p.m. They skip breakfast, maybe they'll have something at lunch. So they're, they're fueled on coffee all morning. So my first thing for them is how, how early or how can we push uh, their breakfast, their, their lunch towards the beginning of the day? How can I get them to eat something? I tell them, I'm like, look, if you have a bite of something first thing in the morning, that is more than you did last week if you don't eat breakfast. Okay. So yeah. again, a bite of, so one cashew nut and one cube of uh, steak is now more than you did last week mm -hmm. and for me it's about building the habit what habit can i build and i focus on one thing um do you know how long it takes to form a habit Go on. most people think it's 21 days research shows the average is 66 days okay so consider the average so that's the average some people do it quicker some people do it slower 66 days is two months yeah for most people so for me to have a consult with somebody and focus on a variety of topics over over eight weeks unrealistic a lot mm -hmm. of the time i'm focusing on breakfast 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 just nail that get that done so it is automatic yeah we talk about automatic and, uh, with clients because you've got your conscious and subconscious your conscious can take on i think 40 items and your subconscious is all of your automatic processes, which is 40 billion items. I want breakfast to be part of your subconscious. You get up, you don't think. It's automatic for you to go, I'm gonna have uh, protein and healthy fats. Instead of have to get up and fight the urge to avoid cereal or bagels or- Something quick and easy. Yeah. And, and I was also reading in your blog that actually not having breakfast um, could, could cause you to put on weight because yeah. you're then trying to counteract later in the day. People talk about metabolism stopping. Metabolism doesn't really stop, it just kind of changes. Um, so how many uh, calories or you might burn and what goes on from a hormonal standpoint of view tends to change uh, when you skip breakfast. Mm -hmm. But I put a quote in the article that it skipping breakfast is a tactic of sumo wrestlers. And most people who come to me are not looking to change into that kind of body shape. Um, people talk about the, the metabolism being a fire and eating often research is kind of flimsy that area it's, research kind of shows more about calories in versus calories out but um there's an interesting body of research or a, a few studies where they look at calories consumed throughout the day but uh, where you consume your calories mm -hmm. so there's an interesting interesting studies on so you've got uh, group one and group two group one have say 50 percent of their calories total calories at breakfast and then 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 30 at lunch 30 percent at lunch and then 20 percent in the evening mm -hmm. so it's a pyramid shape with most of the calories at breakfast less throughout the day and then can uh, group two is the other way around so it's 20 30 50 same exact calories pretty much the same same foods consumed just in different times and different uh, quantities at different times of the day and although it was the same group one who ate most of their calories at breakfast burned more body fat than group two interesting so it kind of throws the whole calorie in my opinion calories are an important part of the equation but i don't look at it with clients especially not at first mm -hmm. it's too much to look at yeah okay 
if you start getting clients to understand do you want to actually sit there weigh out food count calories and Absolutely. look at it i don't think most people want to um, i'd like to people to get into an intuitive state mm -hmm. i.e once you've done something and you've seen results and you can understand the difference between you know uh, too much and too little it tends to be quite easy so i'm not a massive believer in pushing calories on people because mm -hmm. i don't think general population want it when you look at uh, specific sports like bodybuilding and, and other things that maybe but even then i'm not a massive uh, utilizer of that okay but um that's kind of how i start and how i progress people so i start making this change what what are the actual physiological changes that happen if i start eating so let's say it is you and we take you from the the shreddies to as we said the scrambled egg and avocado that you've changed uh hormonally you get a different blood sugar response or insulin response mm -hmm. insulin is not the devil but it is a double-edged sword whereby it is the storage hormone so it can be anabolic in, in which case it can help you build muscle mass and it's really important for building muscle mass but it can also if you mitigate it uh, it's been shown to be beneficial for the brain uh, insulin sensitivity which is also so your ability to utilize sugars and therefore long-term burnt body fat so hormonally you will uh mitigate insulin response from a uh, nervous system or brain point of view if you're looking at uh, certain meats like red meat uh, and nuts you're going to boost certain uh, neurotransmitters namely the ex excitatory ones ones that are going to get your nervous system activated and amped up uh, two of them being dopamine and acetylcholine so dopamine being the neurotransmitter of drive acetylcholine being the neurotransmitter mainly of focus mm -hmm. um, so what you'll find is most people get an alertness feeling in the morning which is obviously exactly what you want first thing we yeah. want to be alert in the morning or when we get to the evening we want to be uh, winding down where we probably want more inhibitory neurotransmitter activation mm -hmm. um, Charles always said that whatever you ate first thing in the morning will then affect the cascade for the rest of the day if you're eating uh, say shreddies in the morning you could have a, some people could have a massive blood sugar spike which then will lead to a cortisol spike due to hunger say two and a half hours two two and a half hours later so the the healthy the protein and healthy fats will satiate you for longer so it's a steady release of blood sugar whereas the the shreddies uh, is going to give you an instant release of blood sugar okay. which then you get processed quite quickly and your your brain signals goes well, i'm hungry i need glucose because the brain needs the most glucose more than muscles um 40 percent of your body's uh, intake needs to go to the brain so it needs to derive it from somewhere and if you're not going to feed it i.e., it's going to give you those signals to feed it if you're not going to feed it it will derive it from the same areas of your body i.e., muscle tissue yeah okay so we talked a lot about those uh, fats and proteins can you give me some examples of what you would recommend in the let, let's start with the fats start with the fat so for me it's a handful of nuts mm -hmm. okay i'm looking for things organic nuts cashews almonds pine nuts different nuts have different benefits i wouldn't overthink that um for those that it's an open handful for those that are slightly more uh, they want to count things between six and 12 nuts on average um, you could look at avocado quarter to a whole avocado depending on activity levels and, and muscle mass levels and then a healthy serving of fish oil can be a benefit to a lot of people mm -hmm. um i'm gonna open myself up for ridicule here mm -hmm. peanuts Pe peanuts are actually legumes mm -hmm. the only reason i'm i'm not against them i'm not necessarily for them i leave them out not just because they're legumes but they're one of the highest food intolerance ratings mm -hmm. so if you if you eat something that has a you are intolerant or sensitive or even allergic to it's going to cause a reaction in your body which then is not conducive to gaining muscle mass or losing body fat and improving performance mm -hmm. so i stay away from peanuts in general okay what about things like cheese cheese could be good i think one of the again it's the same thing uh, are you are you intolerant to the dairy if it's like that uh, the cheese that i have most success with with clients and recommending is halloumi Okay. most people do quite well with that yeah but cheese again it's a <laughs> nutrition nutrition is a bit of a bitch to study because it's always areas of gray mm -hmm. so you could uh, you need context cheese for you it's a case of try it how do you feel did you did your stomach have a reaction did you have loose stools 
uh, did you feel alert did you feel sleepy if you, if you, if you feel good on it then it, you could definitely be fine with it mm -hmm. um, but again the amount of people that uh, don't do so well with dairy it could point to might not be optimal for you yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll point to something that James said <laughs> uh, life is a study of one and is one okay so try something see how you feel use yourself as a study be objective yeah. find the qualitative or quantitative factors you can look at and then analyze and, and, and change it mm -hmm. um, I'm not I used to be a lot stricter but I think that came from a position of ignorance I think now I'm able to analyze and go yes no maybe try it is yeah. usually what I say to clients um, I like clients to try things so if it doesn't do well do well with them I kind of prove my point in a better way <laughs> yeah that makes makes good sense and and um, proteins Where proteins I mean protein? I'm all about meat in the morning mm -hmm. um, I love red meat and I know people will talk about red meat being bad for you uh, it's utter rubbish um, red meat poor red meat is bad for you those studies were uh, not properly designed they, they utilized mostly uh, processed red meat any processed food is most processed foods are not going to be so good for you um, so I, I like red meat because it's high in tyrosine so again that's a, an amino acid that's a precursor to dopamine which is again the neurotransmitter the excit excitatory neurotransmitter of drive we discussed uh, alternative options for protein you could you could consider uh, the Icelandic yogurt I don't know how to pronounce it but it's spelled skur skyer uh, yeah I say uh, skyer but skyer we'll call it that but it tastes good yeah I don't mind that with with clients you could add you know some fruit to that mm -hmm. even more protein powder or specific powder that you might use like a gut healthy powder as, as a point of interest on that particular yogurt it's also one of the lowest sugar contents a yeah a lot of yogurts have claim low fat mm. but actually increase the sugar whereas that sky one if you see sugar. low fat on something it generally means high sugar mm -hmm. and again it's not that sugar's evil it's a case of is that the right uh, is that the right macronutrient ratio for you at that point mm -hmm. um, other protein sources I probably put more in the article what did I write in the article it's been a long time I think it was mainly around meats mainly so around on. meat um, I kind of progress people into it because obviously some people look at it and they go oh, I can't eat steak me I can't eat certain fishes like mackerel mm -hmm. I think because the first time I started doing this when Charles recommended it I had mackerel and now I'm like Ugh, can't do that first thing in the morning so mackerel is yeah. a no-no so you've got to you've got to rotate and find out uh, the meats you like eggs of course eggs yeah I've got no problem with that again they're high mm -hmm. on the food intolerance rating mm -hmm. so he he here's the thing I find if you eat eggs every day sometimes or more often than not i find people are sensitive or intolerant to them and they don't know about it because again their body's adapted they think that's not a normal reaction mm -hmm. so i take eggs out for a week and put it in so the majority of the time i start clients out on eggs once a week so when you take someone out and reintroduce it you find out how your body reacts because you've taken it away now you feel normal you put it back in you see what kind of response you get so eggs is normally a once a week thing if you still react badly to it on once a week we go to once a month Mm -hmm. if you still do that once every three months you can for some foods um, reverse uh, sensitivity or intolerance to it okay like I've been I've been at one time very allergic to fish oils I'll give you a story so I, was a, I was in Rhode Island on one of Charles Poliquin's courses I can't remember which one it was uh, and I went to bed I took, had my fish oils I was, get, I was getting these I was waking up with my, my lip basically blew up I was having like hives or reactions and I couldn't figure out what it was. I was itching. It was horrendous. When I had the course, it kind of died down as I got there. I was highly embarrassed. When I turned up, I was like, fuck, people are going to see me. Um, but it turned out to be fish oils. Okay. So I took them out for three months, put them back in, slowly titrated them back up and I was fine with them. Okay. So often you can be literally allergic to something. Mm -hmm. Take it out. Usually fix your gut. Eat a little bit better. Get a little bit healthier. Yeah reintroduce the food and you'll be fine and how many eggs would you have so I think I think six eggs is around 50 grams of protein so that would be a decent size protein content for a 90 kilo male or 90 kilo person mm -hmm. um, so if you're heavier if you're 180 kilos you need 12 eggs okay. I think you should you should push the you should push it as hard as you can um, again when I say six eggs to most people they look at me in, in amazement or shock <laughs> 
So I'll say, look, if you're, what are you used to eating? They'll go, what, two eggs, okay. Start cooking three eggs. Mm -hmm. When three becomes normal and easy to eat, go to four, yeah. five, six, and just progress upward. And just a variety of types, scrambles and poached and so on. I think if you analyze it, I think mm. poached is, is, is better because I think you can oxid I think you can oxidize the cholesterol with scrambled eggs. But I think if you're analyzing that is is too specific. Like don't don't yeah. pick holes in that. So if you want boiled eggs, scrambled eggs, fried eggs, I don't care. Just have some eggs. Okay. So keep that variety. Don't I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of egg whites. I think you should have the yolk. There's a lot of beneficial uh, factors with the yolk. I think that's a early late 80s early 90s bodybuilding uh, protocol mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with the yolk okay. eat the yolk guys stop having egg wipes my favorite pet <laughs> so should I eat the same every day no that's the big thing that I change on people uh, you should rotate on a three-day rule minimum mm -hmm. so what that would state is if you had steak uh, on Monday for breakfast don't have steak again until Thursday okay if you have cashews on tuesday for breakfast don't have cashews again until friday so it's a three-day rotation rule if you think about it you therefore only need three different types of protein and three different types of healthy fat mm -hmm. you can be and it's a longer continuum allergic intolerant or sensitive to foods uh, what i found after discussions with many experts is the less you rotate the more likely you are to be intolerant sensitive or allergic to something mm -hmm. uh, you can avoid all those problems simply by rotating foods once you start rotating foods you can self-analyze and go how is this food making me feel should i keep it in or should i get rid of it for a week one month three months okay so what if it starts to get a bit dull you got any exotic yeah tips that you like <laughs> getting into the, the best tip on that is to, and these, these meats are more expensive, uh, is to look at, there's two websites in the article, uh, OzGrow and OzLink. I have no sponsorship with them uh, or links to them. Uh, but on that website, you can get anything from python to crocodile to kangaroo. Kangaroo is really nice, as is ostrich, to be honest. So I would, you know, once a month, if you can splash out, on uh, the burger platter from Oslink. It will give you a variety of uh, meats and variety being the spice of life. Your body loves variety, mm -hmm. especially with food. I think there's an interesting stat where the, I think it's the average American eats 12 foods in their life. And I think that's a shame. I think you should, you should try different things. So if it's getting boring, spice it up uh, okay. like that. I can recommend water buffalo. There's a there's a farm just north of Romsey, and it's beef like it used to taste. Is there? So, I did not. This is right on my doorstep. So, I don't even know about it. I'm gonna have to visit I, that. I think it's run by Jody Schechter, the old uh, motor racing driver. Oh, brilliant! So I'll give you that later. Excellent. Okay, I think I've covered most of the questions. Um, you talked about Charles and how he's shaped a lot of what you do not only in this area but in other areas anything you'd like to add it's funny you say that because i had a i had a, had a call with a client yesterday and we, we were we were discussing some of the stuff charles was teaching but he's shaped most current leaders in the industry somewhat regardless of his uh, uh forthright opinions unfortunately he was usually right um but yeah um he he, he popularized this with me uh, first heard about 2009 I think it was even trademark registered at one point to me in that breakfast uh, his articles not available anymore at the moment but um but yeah I owe, I owe a lot to him and his way of thinking mm -hmm. it's funny you say that because we were saying exactly yesterday that he's shaped so many people in in the industry not just not just me yeah and you know if I if I think broader I, I started off with you know this this is a great controversy and it's against what a lot of Britons and perhaps Americans do if you look broader and look at what other countries eat mm -hmm. and you, you go to European countries and a lot of them will have a meat platter mm -hmm. and cheese platter for breakfast yeah and of course there's a French with the croissants and so on but mm -hmm. you know you take that away there is evidence that supports this that this is a good thing the sure. Mediterranean diet and so on sure. so you know this isn't some wacky um, made-up thing here that uh, no not at all, not at all. So, 
Anything else you'd like to, to add just to wrap up? Uh, we well, covered everything. I can think of. Well, if you have any questions, fire them in the comments. Yeah. I'll be glad to answer them. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that, Tom. That's breakfast done. I'm sure we'll get to lunch and supper at a, <laughs> at a later podcast. I look, I look forward to it.